Jerome Powell is pivoting and now he's saying that aggressive rate hikes might be a thing of the past and the stock market loved it. Then we got a new report this morning from ADP where they released the private payroll increases over the last month and what they said is that private companies added way less jobs than expected last month. And it feels like every day we hear of more layoffs and today is no different. DoorDash and Kraken announced some big layoffs today. So let's jump right in. Today is Wednesday, November 30th. And let me start by talking about the Federal Reserve Bank because on December 13th and December 14th, the Federal Reserve Bank has their next meeting where they're going to announce what they want to do with interest rate hikes and how aggressively they want to raise interest rates again. And today, Jerome Powell spoke as a way to kind of get markets and investors ready for whatever might be coming in December. And Jerome Powell said some very interesting things about interest rate hikes. Now, there's been a lot of rumors and people anticipating that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to stop doing these aggressive interest rate hikes at some point in the near future. The last few Fed hikes were 75 basis points, meaning 0.75%. And that is a relatively large interest rate hike. And so people are now anticipating that the next interest rate hike will be around 0.5%, meaning 50 basis points. And here's what Jerome Powell said. He said, quote, it makes sense to moderate the pace of our rate increases as we approach the level of restraint that will be sufficient to bring inflation down. Essentially, what that means is as we hit what he calls the terminal level, of interest rates, meaning as high as interest rates need to go, as we get to the level that we need to go for interest rates to bring inflation down, remember they wanna bring inflation down to 2%, we still are at seven and about 0.7%, so 7.7% inflation, and we need to bring it down to 2%, and interest rates are, according to the Fed, according to Jerome Powell, almost where they need to be, and because of that, it makes sense, according to him, to start moderating, AKA lessening, the aggressiveness of interest rate hikes. There's one more thing that he said. He said, quote, the time for moderating the pace of interest rate increases may come as soon as the December meeting. Essentially, it could be as soon as December that the Fed starts slowing down the interest rate hikes. Did he say that for sure? No, but markets loved it because when you don't increase interest rates as fast, well, that means there's more money floating around and there's more money for the stock market. So that's why as soon as the Jerome Powell, the Fed started speaking, well, markets rallied because of it. And the reason why they're doing this is because in the November meeting, the first time, this was the first time that the Fed said this, is that they want to start looking at not just where inflation is today, but rather where inflation is heading. Because up until now, or up until November, the Fed always said, that the way that they're going to make their inflation decisions on what they wanted to fight inflation with interest rates. What they always said is that they were going to look at inflation and jobs numbers where they are right now. And based off of that, they would make a decision on interest rates. And in November, in their last meeting, they changed that. They said, we're no longer gonna look at where inflation and jobs are today. We're gonna look at where inflation is heading and where jobs are heading because we have to start taking into account the cumulative effect of the interest rate hikes. Essentially, they say that there's gonna be a lag time for interest rates to get absorbed into the economy. And because of that lag time, they don't want to just keep raising interest rates without seeing that inflation fall. And so this is where Jerome Powell is saying that they want to account for this lag time, the cumulative effect of interest rate hikes. This brings me to number two. The second piece of interesting data is the ADP jobs report. So this came out this morning and ADP is one of the largest payroll processors in the country. And they released these reports where they show the number of jobs added by private companies. And what they said is that last month that private companies hired 127,000 people, 127,000 jobs were filled by private companies, which is way lower than what was estimated by economists. The estimation was 190,000 jobs. We only added 127,000. And to put that in perspective, the month prior, we added 239,000 jobs. So quite a bit less than last month and quite a bit less than what was expected. And the ADP chief economist did talk about this and what he said was, quote, 
Turning points can be hard to capture in the labor market, but our data suggests that the Federal Reserve Bank tightening is having an impact on job creation and pay gains. Essentially, what they're saying is that the tightening of interest rates, the raising of interest rates are having an effect in the job market and it's making it harder for businesses to hire more people because, well, borrowing money is more expensive and the cost of doing business is more expensive. And now we're seeing that in the job market because now, well, not only are we seeing layoffs, but also companies are hiring less people. So something that you, that you definitely want to keep your eye on because if that trend continues, that's going to cause a lot more pain in the economy. And I'll talk about what that means in just a minute. Right now, I'm just going to go over what is happening. Then this brings me to the topic of layoffs. Now, of course, we cover all of this in Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I highly recommend you do so because for one, it's free, and number two, it's completely brief, and number three, it's an easy way for you to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial market. So if you're an investor and you wanna make better decisions with your money, Market Briefs is a free and simple tool for you to use. And I'll put the link to how you can join Market Briefs down in the description below. So now I'm talking about layoffs. DoorDash announced this morning that they're going to be laying off 1,250 employees. And this comes at a time where their stock is down about 60% for the year. And Kraken announced that they're also going to be laying off about 30% of the workforce, which is about 1,100 people. Both of these announcements came out today and both are coming at a time where tech companies have been getting hit extremely hard with the economy, with interest rate hikes, and with the changes in the markets. And we're seeing this, I mean, it feels like every day there's another big company that announces layoffs where it's something, 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 and then layoffs happen. I mean, this has just been going on for the last number of months and it doesn't look like this is slowing down, but it's you can see the change in the economic cycle where before it was hiring, 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 especially in the tech sector. There was hires, hires, and boom in the economy. And now it's not only are we not hiring, we're laying people off and businesses are hiring less. And so as interest rates continue to rise, that's gonna impact more than just tech companies. And this brings me now to the whole idea of what does this mean going forward? Well, we have a lot of issues globally. China had even more violent protests last night. They have their own lockdowns going on. Europe is facing a bunch of economic issues. They're facing a horrible energy crisis. Canada is facing their own issues in the real estate market. So you have a global economy where there's pain in many different aspects. And here in the United States, we're still facing very high inflation and we're raising interest rates very aggressively. And all these things are going to take time to develop and get absorbed into the economy because the reality is raising interest rates this aggressively will have consequences. When, when will these consequences be seen? Is it going to be in two months? No, but it will happen over time through 2023 into 2024. This is not a 2023 thing. This has been gonna be going on for a while because it is gonna take time for inflation to actually fall back down to 2%. Inflation is still extremely high. You gotta remember, 7.7% .7 inflation 12 months ago would have been the record high. That would have been breaking new highs. It would have been extremely high inflation. And today, it is still extremely high inflation, but it's considered great news. So we're still having very high inflation. And this high inflation has yet to go away. That has consequences by and own. And then you have the higher interest rates. Raising interest rates aggressively is going to affect many different assets. The real estate market is the most sensitive because as soon as you raise interest rates, borrowing money becomes more expensive to buy a home and homes become less affordable. But raising interest rates are gonna impact every single asset class because people, businesses, and governments have a lot of debt actually more debt than ever before. And all of this debt is not fixed rate debt. So as this debt readjusts, then people are gonna have to pay the price of the higher interest rates. And we've only just begun to see the higher interest rates. So over the next 12 months, we're gonna see interest rates readjust, which means people are gonna have to start paying the higher interest rates. And then over the next 24 months, you're gonna see the actual effect of the higher interest rates, assuming that the Fed doesn't start cutting interest rates. So understanding that the consequences of 
interest rate hikes and inflation are going to take time to be absorbed and that creates that opportunity for the people that are prepared and financially educated which means right now you want to be the person that's being prepared and getting financially educated because a lot of people are going to say oh there's no crash there's no recession everything's good but that's not the way it works a lot of people are impatient and the people who are impatient are going to be the ones who get burned the most so be patient understand what's happening be financially educated and just keep preparing.